All right, so welcome to Adventure Hour with Daniel Blumberg. I'm over at San Falasco State Park. It's Adventure Hour because my GoPro should last about an hour. Welcome to San Falasco. Today is September 2nd. And Hurricane Dorian is off the east coast of Florida about 60 miles east of West Palm Beach, over the Bahamas. Um, and it's pretty much destroyed the Bahamas. So I just wanted to come out to the park, walk around. My wife decided to go hit tennis balls with a friend. I wasn't really invited, so that's why I'm out here this morning on a walk. used to be able to take my bicycle in this park, but no more, apparently. mushrooms. That's cool. The tree is disintegrated.
This would be why they didn't want bikes. That trail is a bit beat up. You can maybe get down them, going up it, pretty much high difficulty level. Had a lot of rain recently, and so the trail here is very wet. I've been back here before when it was all super sandy. It's because it was so dry, but there's a lot of moisture continuing to migrate down towards this creek I'm heading towards. Do you see an old sinkhole over there? Or maybe that's part of the creek. I think it's part of a sinkhole though. All of this soil, sand. This Florida used to be all underwater. When the earth was a lot warmer. Oh wait, the earth is a lot warmer now. I guess that doesn't bode well for future generations here unless they grow gills and can live underwater because of climate change. Mainly because of Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell, actually. They are the architects of the destruction of Florida. And let's be clear, it is the destruction of Florida that's occurring. Ooh, look at all this. Really low water. The animal tracks in the water mud there. I wonder how many gators have come through this area. There could be one waiting right now. If a gator lunges at me, I'm going to jump in the air and then I'm going to be really pissed as my foot lands in its mouth. That's cool. The creek's going right through here. What's nice about being back here is you don't hear any cars. Ooh, that's all water. A little pond. You hear the wind bustling through the leaves. You hear the creek. You get to hear me talking. But no cars, no technology. Obviously, I'm having to use tech to record this to show you, but that's all right. Got a little wooden bridge over the creek. Because of where we are, this water should be relatively clean. Unlike the creek I went to the other day that had fecal warnings about playing in it because there was too much human shit in there. This creek um, is in the middle of a really large, uh, undeveloped stretch. The water... Shoot. Ah! Whew. That was a sneeze with an awesome echo. Um, well, I, I wouldn't want to drink this water on a regular basis. It shouldn't give me fecal contamination to do so. Um, bathing in it should be okay if necessary. Not currently necessary. Oh, he has a tree going across the creek. That's what you've got to love about these creeks. When I was a kid, wow, when I was a kid, that makes me sound so old. But when I was a kid, where I used to live, not all that far from here, uh, it's called the hammock. It's actually the closest subdivision to where we are right now, or where I am right now. Um, the whole back set of that subdivision was like this, except you made your own trails and you found your own creeks. And there would be logs or trees that had fallen over the creek and you would go and or I would go and cross those logs, walk across them. It was a lot of fun. You know, always in a hurry to grow up and then when you get old you realize what you missed when you were young. Now look at this. It's like this crossing point's a little bit muddy. Um, across a little bit like here, like here, there we go, because that pond is overflowing, it's draining towards that creek we just went by. I would guess there's probably a gator or two in this little pond, probably some small ones.
remember a couple weeks ago I saw a video on YouTube. It was a alligator in South Florida. It's like a seven foot alligator. And it was on a military base. It was crossing a road. It crossed the road. And then there was a chain link fence. And it really wanted to be on the other side of that chain link fence. So it climbed up and over and then dropped down to the other side. Just kept on walking after that. It was not to be deterred by a pesky chain link fence in the way. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, alligators can climb trees. In case people were unaware of that. That is probably a gopher tortoise hole. Although this is a lot wetter of an area than they usually burrow in. Wow. Got the sniffles walking in here. Sorry about that camera. Underwater area at the moment from all the rain. Sometimes it's nice just to be able to get out, walk alone, be able to admire areas without being bothered by people. Ooh, speaking of being bothered by people, there's a heron over there hunting. Smart bird staying away from people. Because people are evil. Well, except my viewers. My viewers aren't you. All right, you notice there's lichen growing on this tree all the way around the base. It's actually really pretty. Mosquitoes look pretty. Interesting, I'm actually higher than the creek. Wonder what would happen if, if they get really pissed if I changed the flow of the creek, coming down here and drawing a line for it to go and flood this area. And then what would happen if that happened? I'd probably get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> so I'm not gonna do it. All right, so in theory, I think I'm supposed to go this way, owing to the washout of the trail. It's a bit hard to tell at the moment. Red markings on trees signify paths. That, or there's a mass murderer nearby marking his domain. I guess you're gonna have to pick.
woodpecker feeding post. I'm going to watch my steps. It's the ground here is being held together by these roots, which make it interesting to walk on. See, now look at that, there's a tree across the creek. Woo, speaking of, look at that. Look at that guy. That's awesome. He's got this web strung up between these two trees. I don't know if you can tell the difference between the distance on these trees. These trees are about 20 feet apart. And that spider has his web between the two of them. That's why golden orb weaver spiders are incredible. Another one up there on that dead tree. Creek. Trail used to be where the tree fell down. Oop. Spider. I'm walking through. People have been through here already this morning, but I'm walking through webs. Like I said, the trail is really, really muddy. All the moisture literally sinking in the mud. <laughs> oh, no, that's a pretty tree. Look at this tree. Can't really zoom in on it, but I'm gonna zoom up the tree. That's really pretty.
uh, my path is very much so underwater. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to get around this. Unless I'm supposed to swim through it. Uh, there's no way to continue along the way that I was going. There was no... Ooh. And there are things that aren't happy with me being over here. So I'm going to go off trail a little bit, see if I can forward to get across and continue where the path is. Not sure that's going to be possible. And it's not. I'm going to have to turn around. It does not say anywhere that this trail is closed. No signs whatsoever, but I'm supposed to continue where that red thing is. And that's completely underwater, so that's not going to happen. So, back to where we go. So, always be flexible in where you're planning on going. I want to point out how these roots help hold the soil back. There's a good four inches of difference in how these roots are holding the soil back. This is actually providing just a dam for the soil. So the tree is preventing the soil from eroding away. And that's the only thing preventing the soil from eroding away. Dead tree trunk. Woo! Literally just skid on that mud. not want to walk through that spider's web because I would scream If you 
just see these roots I'm climbing up. Again, an example of holding back the soil terrain from all just sliding away. Mushrooms on the woodpecker home. I can't stop moving because there are bugs currently chasing me, including, I'm sure, dozens of skeeters. This is another good example tree root holding back the terrain from sliding away, literally providing a dam for the soil to keep it from going away. Without the soil, the tree dies. So it's actually the trees are geoengineering on a micro scale their environment. I'm thinking more and more of what I saw earlier was a gator. Look at this, didn't even notice this on the other way. That's pretty cool. Hurricane comes, that's where the critters will go and hide. They won't attack each other, they'll actually go in there and they'll all be in there together to hide from the, the storm. Of course, I have a burrow so close to the creek is pretty scary if you want to survive. This time I'm going to go this way. Over this little bridge right here. I think I'm on a different trail now. This is the orange trail. Before I was on the red trail. I'm definitely ascending back up from the lower levels though, where all the water is going to. That's an interesting tree leaned way over and it's grown as best as it can to get the sunlight. I'm pretty sure that's a magnolia tree growing sideways. It's not super high yet, but it is very muggy. Got my jacket on to keep the bugs off, but it makes it toasty. Interesting that tree's got all those knobs on it.
Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? Going pretty good. Um, part of the trail out that way is underwater. Yeah. This way too. Yeah. That, oh, that way too? Yeah, it's the same trail. It connects, but it, you can go quite, quite a bit further, but it's, it's still underwater. Yeah. Might be the same one coming up on the other side. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And then if you go back around this other loop on the Moonshine Creek loop, it's flooded on the other side. Okay. So, just so you know. All right. All right. <laughs> Well, I'll walk till I see some water and then I'll turn back around. You too. Uh, okay. <laughs> I reached the end of that trail. <laughs> it, it ends very abruptly. <laughs> wow, this was a long tree. Two, three, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. That tree was about 29 meters tall. For those in the metric system. That was a pine. Sun has come out. Even escaping deep in the woods, still hear a plant flying overhead. That's a lot of mushrooms. The mushrooms are pretty cool. So, the tree falls. It's a giant block of cellulose. Cellulose is incredibly hard to digest. Fungi get on it and they literally break down the cellulose, chew through it, and then they themselves end up biodegrading and it becomes basically a fertilizer. 
so other stuff can grow. So then you have a cycle. Also interesting, fungi are one of the oldest of life forms. A uh, bunch of hickory nuts in here. Seeding the next generation. So many of them get a chance to mature, which I doubt. So even this part of Florida will be gone. So all the ice melts over in Greenland. Hey, squirrel, you're a good boy. No junk food for you. All right, I think this might be where the trail is split off and I went to the creek. Yep. So this is the way back up to the exit. Oh, I've been in here for 41 minutes. Nice. Oh, can see the vehicles. I might go stop at Devil's Mill Hopper too. Walk around in there, or at least up and down. All the rain should be nice and noisy in there. Lighting is just diffused out from the clouds overhead. It's gotten so much brighter. It's nice. And all the sand. Different um, ecosphere.
a little bit of damage on that tree. It's gonna fall at some point. Yeah. Back into the parking lot. 